What's up everyone, Vinny Musso here from Musso Athletics here for day three of our 30 days of force. Still talking about force absorption. If you haven't seen the previous episodes in the series, I recommend taking a look at them because it's gonna help everything that we talk about today and moving forward make a little bit more sense. Uh, so yesterday we talked about our slower eccentric movements and talked about how important those are you know, for mainly injury reduction and giving us a greater capability to produce force. Today we're going to be talking about another method of training ourselves for force absorption and that is rate of force development. So the difference between our rate of force development or our RFD as it's commonly referred to as an abbreviation, the difference between that and eccentrics is a lot of times our slower eccentric movements are really all about you know how much weight you know can you control that's kind of more about absolute strength trying to move a lot of weight while still controlling it our rate of force development while still taking into account how much weight or how much force can you absorb we're also talking about how quick can you absorb it so that's really the big difference between our rate of force development compared to our slower eccentric training. And what's so important about our rate of force development training is there's a higher specificity to sport than our slow eccentrics, okay? So think about, again, you know, any type of sporting event that you've watched on, uh, on television, you know, everything happens super quick. So the amount of time that's actually spent absorbing force, redirecting, and then producing is, is very quick. Okay, so in those types of movements, you know, our muscles really aren't, you know, pulling, for lack of a better term. So think about, you know, let's think about, uh, you know, you're watching a basketball game, you're watching a basketball player, you know, he's about to take off for uh, a two foot dunk. Okay, so as they run up, okay, they essentially jump into a one, two step. So Essentially what that athlete has done is they've launched themselves forward into almost like a free fall into that one two step. So as they launch forward, they're not their muscles aren't really actively pulling themselves down into that position. The the athlete is more kind of free falling into that position. Okay, once they get to that position, even though the muscles aren't actively pulling themselves down to that there's still going to be a high amount of force that that athlete has to absorb before they can produce, okay? So that is why rate of force development plays, you know, so a very, you know, key factor in how much force that we can produce. So again, that athlete, you know, is kind of free falling and as soon as they hit, that's when they have to absorb force. So like not so much as, you know, heavy weights, how much can I control, but more how quick can I absorb those forces, okay? And going into a little bit more detail about, you know, the, the specificity, if we look at different athletic movements, if we look at two foot movements, so like a two foot jump, like the example I used, our ground contact time is roughly 0.2 seconds. So that's the amount of time that that person will spend on the ground before they get back up into the air. Okay, if we look at more one foot of movements, like if we go more towards our sprinting, movements, you know, are running, jumping off of one leg, that's closer to 0.1 seconds. So you can see how quickly our, or how short and quick our ground contact times have to be, you know, to be explosive and to be a good athlete. So the key there that I want you to take away is of those, you know, relatively quick, you know, ground contact times that we have, we don't want to spend a majority of that time absorbing force, okay? Because if you think about it, the more time that we spend absorbing force, the less time we have to produce force. So the, the main thing that our rate of force development training helps us with is it will give us more time to produce force during those ground contact times. Okay, so again, very quick movements. And oftentimes the difference between, you know, someone who's, you know, we view as a really strong, really explosive athlete. The difference between them and someone who maybe not be as athletic is that first athlete, the explosive one, just has, you know, greater capability of absorbing force and they can do it quicker. So they have more time to produce force and that's what gives them that edge 
in terms of athleticism over someone else. So that's really the key for our rate of force development training. Okay, we're still exposing the body to you know high amounts of force, but instead of over exaggerating and prolonging the amount of time that uh, the body is you know under tension or trying to absorb force, we're talking about how quickly can that athlete absorb that force. Okay, so that's the main difference between our rate of force development method of training and our slower eccentric part of training, okay? So the technique that I like to use, and this goes you know, by a few different names, I've heard them referred to as rapid eccentrics, uh, a term that I like to use is catches, because that's essentially what you're doing. You're catching your body in a certain position, okay? So with, for this technique, the difference between this and our slower eccentric training where our slower eccentric training is really exaggerating the time, you know, how long it takes us to go down and controlling during that whole, whole time. Our rapid eccentric, you know, our catching exercises are all about, you know, how quick can you get yourself down? And more importantly, how quick can you catch and stop your body, okay? So a lot of the exercises that you'll see at the end of this video, you'll see me pull myself down into a position and just stick that landing. Okay, so one of the, you know, one of the most basic ones that we can do that I'll show right now are, are just two-footed pull-downs, okay? So for our two-footed pull-downs, we come up onto our toes, and I'm thinking about trying to pull myself actively attacking the ground, okay? So I'm not just kind of letting, you know, myself free fall into a drop, okay? I get up nice and high, and I want to pull myself down to the ground, okay? So even though we're pulling, again, our muscles aren't going through the same type of pull or push that they would during an east, slower eccentric training movement. But I want to, again, see how much force I can generate in a downward fashion because the more force I can produce down, the more I'm training my body to quickly absorb it, okay? So I come up onto my toes, arms overhead, and I quickly pull myself down. And what I want to focus on is as soon as my feet hit the ground, I stick. Okay? So a lot of times you see with people who maybe haven't trained in this fashion before or don't have the greatest eccentric strength, you'll see them hit the ground and then continue to sink a little bit more. Okay? It's probably not going to be drastic. You're not going to see someone hit, hit, try to stabilize and then fall all the way to the floor. Okay? A lot of times it's subtle, but you'll see some people come down when they hit where they should have stuck here, they'll sink down a little bit further. Okay, so that is a person who could definitely benefit from further training, further developing their ability to catch, de develop and catch force, you know, in quick, you know, very quick amounts of time. Okay, so again, just to kind of summarize the difference between our two methods, the method that we talked about yesterday, our slower eccentric training, that's more about how much, how much weight or how much force can we absorb and control, okay, really working on exhausting ourselves and our, and, and our muscles' ability to eccentrically contract and eccentrically control weight and movement. And our rate of force development has a higher specificity to sport because we're not only talking about how much force can we absorb, but how quickly. Again, that, that, that quickness simulating more athletic or game-type movements uh, that being the main difference between our rate of force development and our eccentric, slower eccentric training. Okay, so at the end of this video, I'm going to put, you know, again, a few different uh, video, a few different exercises that really focus on our rate of force development. Again, hopefully, you know, no matter what type of profession you're in, whether it's in a rehab, physical therapy, personal training, or working with athletes more in a in a strength and conditioning type of field. Hopefully you can, you know, see some of these exercises, take some and apply them to your, you know, to your field, to your profession. Okay. So that'll be it for day three. Stay tuned for day four tomorrow where we go in a little bit more detail about force absorption.